All right, Wargaming enthusiasts, we've got some Q&A, some incoming mailbag here. Fritz, Wargaming Tactica for alternate activation. What we tend to see in modern war games where you set up your toys on your side of the table. I've got my toys on my side of the table, and we take turns activating units in terms of movement, shooting, special effects. And uh, this is geared towards Star Wars Legions. Now, this is a dangerous place for me to be because other than checking out the miniatures, I have not jumped into the rule set yet. And I'm going to do a little bit more research. I'm going to look for, I don't want to say loopholes. Stress points is a little bit more accurate. One of the things that I pushed up to my Wargaming Tactica playlist here on my channel is this idea of stress points in a Wargaming system. And by stress points, I mean, we've got this simulation, we've got this narrative this understanding that within the scope of this game, you and I can do certain things. And for the most part, the rules work well. But if you tend to take your resources and put them all into specific areas, that the rules, there's a little bit of stress with how they work out, volume of dice or, or special powers. I'm not talking about being a metagamer or a power gamer, but understanding that there's places where just how the rules operate, they slow down a little bit. Can we look for those stress points to use them? I definitely do not need a new miniatures game to jump into, but hey, it's Star Wars. That's one of the reasons why I got involved in X-Wing miniatures in the first place, because everybody knows Star Wars. So maybe we'll take it from space to the ground. But I wanted to frame this just based on an alternating activation system. Now, back in the day, legacy games, mass combat type games which are still out there, like Warhammer 40K, you have this um, system where you set up your toys, I set up my toys. You go first. You activate all your stuff. You shoot your stuff. I might have a couple of minor interrupts or, or things out of the phase, but essentially I sit there while you do your thing, and then you sit there while I do my thing. And we tend to see this with mass combat games just as a frame of reference because there were literally so many miniatures to move, to have a cross-activation system, that, that would be challenging. That's not to say legacy games from the 80s didn't have this. Battletech, there's massive Battletech Tactica where we take turns based on initiative. So we're going to pull in some of those ideas. There's other modern games like God Tier, which have a hybrid system where depending on the phase of the turn, the first phase of the turn, you get to decide you move all your stuff then I move all my stuff, or I move all my stuff and you move your stuff. The advantage or disadvantage here is if you go first and move all your stuff, you get the chance for first claim and better position, but then I get to be more reactive. And then the second phase of the game where we actually get into combat and powers, we alternate units back and forth. So God Tier has some very interesting tactica pulling in both of those aspects. So within that framework, the two things I'm looking for on a very top level, and we're pushing this out there just to get started, and of course in the comments, any feedback, are there units that you can take or ways that you can stack the initiative, sync the initiative? If you have five units and I have five units, we're going to alternate back and forth. Ideally, in a game, in that phase, whatever phase we're in, my most important units. Now, what's an important unit in that phase? Am I claiming an objective? then the important unit is going to be the unit that can get there the fastest. Am I looking to be killy and get stuff done? Then my most powerful unit moving on it. Am I looking for a tactical position to shoot? Perhaps getting there first or getting there second. What I mean by that is you don't want with a back and forth activation to be left last and having your key units. You want your opponent to move their stuff, to be forced to move their stuff, and then you move your stuff whether you win or lose initiative, whether you move first or second. So within your army, are there, now based on the currency to, to purchase these units, battle points, power points, whatever we're going to call it, empire points, force points, are there units that you can take where you can have these initiative sinks, where you can take certain units that are smaller or less powerful. So if it comes down to it where we're looking to move to a certain area and you're forced to move, you move this disposable unit. You move this, this initiative sink unit first, forcing your opponent to, to move their other units first, forcing you to 
have them see where they want to move so you can react. Or in this case, being an active player where you can move your key units first and follow up with those. Can you split units? How can you get more stuff on the table without just taking junk? The second aspect is based on the rules. Are there interrupts? Are there special powers? Are there abilities? Um, we see this in chain of command, World War II historicals, where it's uh, a system where you roll to activate. And as you activate units, I have resources that I can spend either by putting a unit in Overwatch on my turn or spending um, certain command dice, generating command dice and spending them to interrupt. So you can activate a tank on your turn. You start moving the tank up. I can declare interrupt, have a unit fire off an anti-tank round to represent that. Of course, I have to have line of sight and all that. So I say that within that rule set, are there things in your rule set where you can interrupt or you can act out of turn or you can change movement of a unit, route a unit, aspects like that? That is another way that you begin to break through it. So from a top level approach, those are the two things. What can you take as an initiative sink? And is there the possibility for interrupts?